Um, so for those of you who don't know, I also run a design systems meetup called the Design Systems Coalition. Uh, you can see some familiar faces here. Um, but uh, if you're interested in learning more about design systems, then definitely um, join us at one of those meetups. OK, so today I'm going to talk a bit about um, uh, balance and scale in design systems. I'm going to talk a lot about the challenges that we've experienced at, at GitHub. So I am a design infrastructure manager at GitHub. Um, that uh, sounds like maybe a, a buzzwordy title, but um, basically that um, our team covers design systems, design operations, and customer experience research. And we call it infrastructure because we really feel like that it's worth mirroring the um, engineering infrastructure teams. And really, it's that infrastructure that supports everything we do on product design. Um, I work at GitHub. Um, for those of you who don't know, GitHub um, is a place to host and share code and to collaborate on projects together. And we hope that it um, can become a home for all developers. Um, about 31 million developers use GitHub at the moment. So um, when I talk about scale, we not only think about um, our company and our team, but supporting these 31 million developers. So I'll get on to talking about balance and scale. So when we think about design systems, um, I think about uh, solving a problem once so that many people can reuse that solution um, and not have to think about that problem again. But what I've really found is that we kind of solve a problem once um, for a bit, and then we need to solve that problem again in many different ways. There's lots of things that influence um, why we might need to change our system. Um, it can be new leadership in a company. It can be new technology. It can be insight, insights and learnings um, from customers, new feature development, new business goals. Sometimes we can anticipate that change and try and plan for it. And sometimes things kind of have to break in order to um, force that change for us to adapt. The important thing is that we keep making progress. And we keep making decisions and working towards those goals. We kind of have a mantra at GitHub of progress being better than correctness. It's not really that important if we find the exact perfect solution the thing is that's important is that we keep working towards it. We keep making progress towards that goal. And that we really take that um, to heart on the design systems team. To keep making progress, we keep needing to make decisions. Um, it's, I'm sure all of you who've worked on design systems have gotten into bike shedding discussions about what should we name this thing or how should we organize our spacing scale. Um, at some point, you need to make a decision and move forward. We have to make a lot of decisions with technology choices at GitHub, whether it's what we use to build a design system with or what we use for our documentation. When we're making those decisions, we think about the risk and impact. We think, are we being locked in? Um, with GitHub, we like open source. One of the reasons that we like using open source software is, hey, if this thing doesn't exist next year, can we like fork it and reuse it? And do we want to reuse it? We think a lot about external and internal adoption. Is it people already using this same technology or this same approach? Um, can there be some knowledge transfer? Can I learn from using this technology and apply it elsewhere in GitHub? And what's the value that this thing is giving us versus the effort? So I want to talk about a, a few of these examples. Um, so uh, one is the implementation of our design system. We've gone through a, a few different versions, um, and we actually have all of these versions right now. We have um, Primer CSS. Um, by the way, for those of you who don't know, our design system is called Primer. So with Primer CSS, we have um, Primer Components, with, which is a React component library. And at the moment, we're also experimenting with Rails components. Because the fact is, um, github.com is built in Rails. And even if we're moving towards React, we're still needing to live with this technology for a while. So we're exploring a lot of different options. Even with just one implementation, so with our React component library, we started off um, kind of trying to be, move fast and look at the um, API of the system. And so we started off by using Primer CSS class names and just keeping it kind of simple. When that started to break, we evolved and changed the technology we used. 
Um, we moved to um, CSS and JS libraries. We tried Emotion and then ended up um, where we are now, which is using um, style components and another library called style system. So now our components look something like this. Um, if you uh, are familiar with the code, you can see that there's some props there for, for different things like padding, um, for colors. We tried to make it very flexible, um, and, but also we try to make it easy to use out of the box. One way we think about this when I look at the parts of our design system is we have a theme, um, we have layout components and, and utility props, and we have components like buttons. It's kind of difficult to talk through this because really everything is a component, so I kind of run out of names. Um, but like common components like yeah, alert messages, um, overlays, um, buttons, everyone likes to use buttons. And then utilities. Um, so a lot of you might be familiar with um, utility-centric CSS. We have those system props, which we use a library called style system for, um, gives us kind of like utilities as props on our components. And what we want is for when people consume and use this library, that they can get those default um, primer patterns um, out of the box. So that means they're going to use the theme as is, they're going to use the layout components as they are because everyone wants to you know, vertically and center align things. Um, we, they're going to use buttons out of the box and they're going to use the same um, system utilities. But sometimes we want things to look a little bit different and we want, things to, we want to use the same system in a different way. Um, Primer supports not just github.com, but a lot of other GitHub products. So sometimes people want to keep that theme, but they want to create new components with it. Um, they might, um, for our marketing sites, they might have like a hero component, which you don't really use in the product. Um, and they might want um, the same utilities, but maybe they want to extend them. With marketing, they want even a, a larger scale, and they want um, to extend the typography utilities. Um, and then sometimes we build things that are very different, but we hope that people, designers and developers, don't have to start from scratch. So they might um, add their own custom theme, but they're still going to use layout because that's the same kind of everywhere, but cr create completely different components, and their utilities will be based off different, a different theme. So their colors and their spacing, their topography might be quite different. So documentation, um, we've gone through a lot of different iterations of documentation. Um, I think this is, uh, this is six versions that I'm showing here. These are the ones that I know about. Um, <laughs> and I've seen, um, I think, five of them, no, yeah, five of them in the time that I've been at GitHub, which is three and a half years. And that's quite a lot. And that can feel like, oh my god, really, are we like reinventing our documentation again? But we've needed to evolve this documentation and the way it's built as we've evolved the design system. Um, one version was a Rails app. Another, we had Jekyll. We've used Storybook in combination with these things. We've used um, React libraries called Kit and Next Zero. Um, currently, we're using Next.js um, and MDX. And we've got our own bespoke components. And we've created a new component library to build doc sites with. Um, and now we're considering Gatsby because we've hit some problems and we're like, most of these are static, maybe Gatsby is a better solution. Um, so yeah, lots of different iterations there. For the consumers and the users of the design system though, what we are trying to do is make it easier to find all these things. Um, after going through various different iterations, we found that it's really, really helpful. Um, it's really obvious, but we struggled with this to keep that code with the documentation. But we have Primer CSS, we have Primer Components, that's React, we have Octacons. And so that means um, that all of that code doesn't make sense to live together. Um, and so we have lots of like micro um, websites and documentation sites. And, but what we want them to do is all live under that Primer style domain and be easy to find and have global navigation to switch between all of those. So that's what we're working towards at the moment. We've also gone through a lot of iterations with our process, one of which is our on-call system, which we call First Responder. Um, the First Responder is basically there to try and triage all the incoming issues, bugs that go wrong, um, hopefully not too many availability incidents. Um, it is true, CSS can take the site down. We have done it. Um, and so we have this um, on-call system 
to be able to like, respond to people quickly and help people use our design system. I couldn't find a good illustration for this. <laughs> I was like, it's a squiggly line because we've just gone through many iterations. Um, we've changed the way, we've changed our notification script, which I know for those of you who use GitHub, notifications is not ideal. So we created our own custom script to try and um, pull in all the notifications from all the different repos um, to make sure that we saw things and were able to respond to them. The way we've uh, triaged things and prioritized issues has changed a lot. Um, our area of responsibility has shrunk in some areas and grown in others. Recently, um, we added ourselves to the partial that controls our repo navigation, and I'll get to that way later. And also the time and focus that people need. Um, I'm the manager of the team, and it took a, it took a little time for me to recognize that my, my team were really struggling with trying to do project work at the same time as like triaging these issues and dealing with the sort of very attention-seeking type of work that first responding is. So now when someone's on first responder, they only do first responder. They don't try and do project work at the same time because it's not successful. So with all these things, with different documentation, different implementation, different processes, it's all, we have to kind of like embrace the change. We have to accept that this is just a natural part of working on design systems and, and software development, really. I wanted to share with you some of the new challenges that we haven't fully solved yet that we've been experiencing lately. And I'm, I'm really curious, like afterwards, if people are still hanging around, I'd love to hear what other people's experiences are and, and, and dive into some of these issues um, more deeply. So some of the things we've been talking about is how to more safely experiment and extend our system. Um, guidelines for play, sometimes um, uh, designers want to sort of like explore and experiment with styles a bit more expressively than they might do with just straight out the box like GitHub. Um, when you've worked at anywhere for a certain amount of time, sometimes you need to get outside the box, you need to think differently, you need to bring fre fresh thinking to that. And we've also been talking about when, how and when to delight, um, which is hard sometimes to think about when we think about github.com, a tool where you ship a lot of code and review code. So um, I wanted to share an, an exam some examples of where things have broken or where we needed to change. Um, hopefully you can see that that um, navigation item should not be um, below there. Um, that is one of our tabs on, on the repo um, page, for those of you who know that. And we broke this um, recently. I woke up at 7.30 a.m. last Thursday, um, which was the day we had one of our big conferences um, satellite on where they were launching all the new features to see this bug in, in our Slack channel. Now, I don't do first responder anymore because I'm a manager and it just doesn't work. I'm in meetings a lot and my team do this. But no one was around. Um, uh, the person that's usually um, around at the same time on this coast um, was out and our uh, systems designer based in um, Japan had already gone offline. So I was like, I guess I'm gonna have to fix this then which is scary. I wrote some manager code. It's all right. It worked. <laughs> um, but that was a, a situation where I was, like, I was like, how did this happen? How did we let this happen? When I looked at this bug at uh, 7.30 in the morning, and I'm not really a morning person, so that was hard for me, I was like, well, you know, we've got kind of two choices, really. We can fix this nav and break the design systems pattern. Um, or I can be like, hey team, you need to like solve this a different way and come up with a different solution. Um, but really, I mean, it was a bug. I, of course, I chose to fix the pattern. Um, but the way that I chose to fix the pattern is like this. Um, for those of you familiar, um, you can see that I'm scoping this in what I call a hacks um, class selector, um, which we prefix with hx. So a couple of months ago, um, we set up this hacks directory. And we set that up because of situations like this. We set it up so that we could add hacks into the code, but keep them siloed off so that they didn't leak into areas that we didn't want them to. Um, we wanted to make sure these were easy to find and easy to delete. We have some linting on that so that when it's not used, we get notifications about it. And we also wanted to make it somewhat obvious that this wasn't a pattern to repeat, hence using hx in the actual selector name. The thing that we luckily had the foresight to see is that we assumed that rules will be broken because we'd already been seeing that happen. 
And the thing that we can do, though, is we can provide a way for people to break those rules safely. Um, so, one of the so that's a combination of like we um, we didn't have we had something had to break for us to sort of change our behavior, but we also had luckily seen other things break, so we kind of did um, uh, anticipate some of that change. Um, but yeah, not ideal with the nav breaking them. Um, so something else that I've been thinking a lot about, has anyone read um, Thinking in Systems? I, a few of you, I highly recommend it. Um, the only thing is that it will kind of make you see systems everywhere, so um, beware of that. Um, but I found it helpful to read as someone that works on design systems, but also as a manager and just being in the world. It, it's a great book and I'm reading it again and probably will a third time. So one thing that stood out and stuck with me reading this book is how the system itself causes its own behavior. So there are things in our design system that cause like the output. One of, going back to that sort of play discussion, one of the things we've been talking about is, is GitHub for work or play? Um, I think when we started out with Primer, we saw GitHub as a tool for work, but actually maybe it can be for both. And one of the things that had stemmed and, and started this discussion re recently is a new product um, that only if, I don't think many people would have seen, but it's a new version of GIS called GIS Playground. Um, I, um, yeah, I think there's a bit of a GIF here, but it's very playful, and the interface makes you feel like, this is light, I can have fun here, I can experiment. This isn't like serious code where I have to get everything right. It's not as heavy feeling as creating a new repo on GitHub. And that stemmed that discussion of like how it, it can like GitHub be for work and play, it should be. So how do we create a design system that supports that? I haven't got the full answer yet, but that's something that a new challenge that we're kind, trying to work on. Another thing we've been talking about, like I mentioned earlier, is like, you know, is GitHub a place of celebration and joy and delight? And when is the right time to do that? Um, some of you may have seen GitHub sponsors, um, which is a new feature that we launched um, last, just last week. And this feature allows people to sponsor open source developers. And this felt like, yeah, this is a place where we should celebrate. This should feel delightful. It should feel great. It's a really positive thing that we're adding. Um, interesting backstory. Initially, that heart was purple. And I was like, um, why is it purple and not pink? Pink feels like the right color, right? It's a heart love that feels like a good color to use and the answer was because um, they didn't like this pinkish shades of our red scale which were like the closest to pink they could find in our system so that's a an interesting case of where this because we didn't have pink in the system it caused them to use a color that wasn't quite the right color so of course I added pink and this got about the most positive um, reaction <laughs> I have ever seen to something I've added to our design system um, people were like so excited by this addition of pink. And I think it's because that color just added, made that feature more exciting. It brought that delight to it. And I hope like everything we add to our design system has a reaction like this. But the real thing is, is like we didn't really add pink for the designers at GitHub, even though it may have felt a bit like that. We added pink for our customers because that was the right color to use for the marketing and for this feature and for the button, the heart and the buttons. Um, it was the right thing for our customers. And that's really why we build design systems. Um, we build systems because we can't solve customer problems at scale without them. That's why we have design systems. So design systems need to scale. Design systems should be built for change. Thank you.